Hello everybody. Today we are going to continue lesson 3.5, zeros of polynomial functions. On page 167, sketch the graph of the function by finding the zeros. So we have f of x equals 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 12x. The function has to be given in standard form that we can work with it. And don't forget, before the sketch or that we can sketch it correct, we need to describe the end behavior. So the leading term in our case is 3x cubed, in which the leading coefficient, it is 3, and the degree, it is 3, 2. Leading coefficient 3, which means is positive 3, it is degree what? If the degree is 3, from here we can take the possible turning point, which is 3 minus 2 equals to 2, and the possible zeros, real zeros, which are 3. Now, from the leading term, we can describe the end behavior. So positive leading coefficient or the degree, it will be down, up. For the left side, x approaches negative infinity, y approaches, positive, y approaches negative infinity. And for the right side, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. So let's say this is step two. This is step one. In step two, we will look for the zeros. The symbol to write zero, it is x zero. So it's the x-intercept in which zero is for y. So instead of f of x, y will put zero and we will get 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 12x equals to zero. The common constant factor, it is three. So we can simplify everything by three. It will be x cubed minus 3. x squared minus 4x equals to 0. Common factor, it is x. So we can factor it by x. And it will be x times x squared minus 9x minus 12. Let me just check. Minus 4x. So minus 3x minus 4 equals to 0. Factor the quadratic. So what are the two factors? When we multiply the product negative 4 and when we add them is negative 3 and that ones are negative 4 and 1. So we can factor it more into x times x minus 4 times x plus 1 equals to 0. Apply the 0 property. So from the first factor, x equals to 0. From the second one, x, it is 4. And the last factor, x equals to negative 1. So these are the zeros, the x-intercepts of the function. And the last we look for, it's the y-intercept, 0 for x. So in our equation, in the f of x, given, instead of x, we'll put the 0. So imagine instead of this x, it is 0. 0 times whatever it will be equals to 0. So the y-intercept, it is 0. Let's sketch the graph. The points we found, we plot them on x-axis. So we have 0, negative 1. So let's say this is negative 1. Here, 0. And the 4 is here. The end behavior we said, it is down, up, and we'll take it and plot it in the points. The left side through negative 1 and the right side through 4 and two turning points. So this is the sketch of the function. Already the function is given in, in the factored form, but first of all that we can graph, we need the leading coefficient. 
the leading term and the leading term will find it by multiplying the first term the x term in each one of these bracket uh, so from the first factor the first bracket we have x times from the second one it's x and from the third one it's x2 so it will be equals to x cube in which the leading coefficient it is 1 greater than 0 degree it is 3 which is odd so the end behavior it, did, it will be down up and from the degree the turning points possible turning points they will be 3 minus 1 which means 2 and the possible zeros real zeros they will be 3 possible real zeros let's say they are 3 to find the real zeros, we say 0x intercept and the symbol is x0, so put 0 for y, it will be x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 4 equals to 0. So already the polynomial is factored. We will apply the zero property, which means that from the first factor, x plus 3 equals to 0, it will be x equals negative 3. From the second, x equals to 1. And from the last one, x equals to 4. To four. So the function has three real zeros. And also find the y-intercept, 0 for x. So y, it will be equals, instead of each x, we will substitute with 0, so it will be 3 times negative 1 times negative 4, which equals to 12. So the y-intercept, it will be 0, 12. Now we can sketch the graph. Plot on the graph the x-intercepts, the zeros, we found, so we found a negative 3. We found 1 and 4. The y-intercept it is 12, so let's say it is here 12, and now put the end behavior in the left side down, in the right side up. So it will be connect this point, so it will be something like this. So this is the sketch of the graph of the polynomial function. Find the zeros, describe the end behavior, and graph. So we have f of x equals the leading term, it's x cubed, in which the leading coefficient a n is 1, greater than 0. The degree is 3, which means odd. So the end behavior, it will be down, up. From the degree, we can say the turning points, we can find the possible turning points, 3 minus 1, so two possible turning points, and also the possible real zeros, which are 3. Now find the x-intercept, the 0, put x0, 0, 0 for the y, so it will be x cubed minus 8x squared plus 16x equals to 0. Factor the polynomial expression, the common factor it is x times x squared minus 8x plus 14 equals to 0. The quadratic trinomial, it's a special binomial, it's a 16, so minus 16. 16 is the perfect square of 4 and 4 times 2 is 8, so it will be x times x minus 4 square equals to 0, from which x equals 0, and from the second factor, x equals to 4, multiplicity of 2. 4, 4. So in this point, we are going to have the vertex of parabola. The last we have to find, it's the y-intercept. So in which x equals to 0. So if we put, if we substitute instead of x, we'll put a 0, it will be y equals to 0. 
So y equals to zero, it's the y-intercept. Let's catch the graph. We plot on the x-axis the x-intercept, zero and four. So we have zero and this is four. And the end behavior down and here up. And we said we have multiplicity of two in four. So it will be, as I told you here, it will be the vertex of parabola. So this is the sketch of the graph. Let's try a little bit more. Question 15. So the leading term, it is x cubed, in which the leading coefficient, it is 1, greater than 0. And the degree, it is 3, odd. So the, the end behavior, it will be down, up. The x-intercept, instead of g of x, y, we have to substitute with 0. So it will be x cubed minus x squared minus 25x plus 25 equals to 0. Uh, the polynomial expression has four terms. So to factor it, we will use grouping. From the first, between the first two terms, the common factor is x squared. And between the last two terms, the common factor is negative 25. And between them, it's common factor x minus 1 times x squared minus 25 equals to 0. The first factor. It cannot be factored more, so I will keep it as it is, times. The second factor, the first, it's a binomial, is difference between binomials, and this one, it can be factored. The first term, perfect square, the last term is perfect square. So this, it came from x minus 5 times x plus 5 equals to 0. From the first, x equals to 1. Second x is 5, and third, x equals to negative 5. These are the x-intercepts, the zeros of the function. Now we look for the y-intercept. 0 for x. So we substitute in the given equation. Instead of x, we will put 0. So these terms, they will be 0. Then y, it will be equals to 25. So 25, it's the y-intercept. Now we can sketch. The x-intercepts we found, we will plot them on the number line. So negative 5, 1, 5, and 25 positive. The end behavior in the left side, down in the right side up and now we connect the points this is the sketch of the function let's try more one example the question 16 so f of x equals 9 x 4 minus 40 x squared plus 16 the leading term it's 9 x4 in which the leading coefficient it is 9 greater than 0 and the degree it's 4 even. So the end behavior it will be up, up. Let's find the x-intercepts, the zeros of the function. So put 0 for f of x, y. It will be 9x4 minus 40x square plus 16 equals to 0. To make it easier, you can use substitution. Let x square equals to a. So the equation, it will be 9a square minus 40a plus 16 equals to 0. The first term, it's the perfect square of 3a. The second term, it's the perfect square of 4. 
So let's check if the term in the middle is 2 times AB. 2 times 3, 6. 6 times 4, 24. So this is not a perfect square. So let's see if we can factor it. AC on the top, it's the B term down and put the factors left and right of equals. So 9 times 16, 9 times 6 is 54 and 5, it's 144 and negative 40. So think about two numbers. When we multiply them, their product, it's 144. And when we will add their sum, it will be negative 40. So let me think a little bit. So 12 times 12, uh, 44. Four times 36. Eight times 18. Nine times sixteen six times twenty four. So we can think about two numbers as we said when we multiply the product one hundred forty four and then when we add negative forty. That ones are six times twenty four and six plus twenty four. No, it will not be 40. So then let's try maybe quadratic formula. Let's see. So A equals negative B plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a equals. The coefficient of the first term, it is a. The coefficient of the second, it is b. And the free term, it is c. So then negative b, negative 40, negative ratio, it will be positive plus square root. b squared is negative 4 squared, which means 1,000. 600 and negative 4 times 9 times 16 equals negative 576 all over 2a 2 times 9 18 simplify the root So it will be 40 plus minus square root 1024 all over 18 and square root 1024 equals 32. So here it is factorable, but I don't know. So it will be 40 plus third plus minus. 32 over 18. From here, we will find A equals A equals. So 40 plus 32 is 72. Divided 18 equals to 4. And 40 minus 32, it is 8 over 18. Simplify by 2, it will be 4 over 9. So in this way, we found the A. Now we go back because we said A is X squared. So from the first root, we can write that X squared equals to 4. And from the second one, X squared equals to 4 over 9. Square root on both of the sides, X equals positive negative 2. And here X equals positive negative 2 over 3. 
So these are the zeros, the x-intercepts of the function. After we are going to find the, the y-intercept, in which 0 for x, so we substitute here 0, here 0, these terms, they will be removed, so it will be left y equals 16, the y-intercept. We have the end behavior, we have the x-intercepts, and we have the y-intercept, then we can sketch the graph of the function So the end behavior we said up, up, and the x-intercepts, positive, negative, two. And positive, negative, two-thirds. And we also said the y-intercept is 16. The end behavior, the left side up, the right side up. So we connect the points. This is the sketch of the graph of the function. What are the real and complex zeros? When we take a look in the graph, this graph intersects the x-axis in only one point, which means the function has one real zero. The other zeros, they are complex numbers. The question is, what do we have to do, how to do to find the rest of the zeros? As long the graph, the function has a degree three. So degree three, we said before, uh, the, uh, the degree will tell us how many possible zero, the uh, real zeros. So we found one real zero, which means from the three to left, they are not real and how to find them. So remember that if we have a number, for example, we have 12. Yes, two is a factor of 12. What does this mean? It means that 12 equals 2 times the other factor. And to find the other factor, we have to divide the given ones. So 12 divided by 2 equals to 6. So to find the other factor, we divided the given values. The same we are going to do it, but instead of dividing numbers, we are going to use the polynomials. And how to Fact, to divide polynomials, already we learned about. So from the graph, the x-intercept, it is 3. So I will write x equals to 3. This is the 0, the x-intercept. If we know the 0, we can say what's the factor. So from x equals 3, the factor is x minus 3. If we know one factor, to find the other factor, we have to divide so the given function, we will divide it by x minus 3. As long the divisor x minus 3 is linear, to divide we'll use the synthetic division. x3, x2, x1, x0. Under each one, the coefficients 1, negative 1, negative 4, negative 6. In the left corner, we'll put the x equals 3. The first term, bring it down always, and 3 times 1, 3, negative 1 plus 3, 2, 2 times 3, 6, negative 4 plus 6, 2, 3 times 2, 6, 0. So in factorid form, f of x, it will be x minus 3 times, from the quotient, we'll write the second factor, which is x squared, plus 2x, plus 2. And now we will solve this equation. From here, delta, it is less than 0. Yeah. So to solve this equation, we are going to use the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, it will be negative 2, plus minus square root, b squared, 2 squared, it is 4, Minus 4 times 2 times a, 4 times 2, it will be negative 8, over 2, 8, 2 times 1 is 2. So it will be equals e, negative 2 
plus or minus 4 minus 8, it's a square root negative 4. Square root 4, it is 2, and square root negative 1, it's i. So, plus minus 2i over 2. Simplify by 2, it will be negative 1 plus or minus i. So, the real root, the real 0, x equals to 3. I found it from the graph. And the other two roots, they are complex. And these are negative 1 plus or minus i. Question 18. Waterworks is a company that manufactures and sells pedal boards. The profit P, so P, it's the profit. In hundreds of dollars earned, it's a function of the number of pedals sold X. So the P, it's the profit, and X, it's the number of pedal boards sold, measured into thousands. Profit is modeled by the function. P of x equals negative 3x cubed plus 48x squared minus 144x. What do the zeros of the function tell us about the pedal boards that they should be produced? So that we can answer this question, we have to find the zeros of the function and we have to sketch the graph of this function. So then, as we did before, the leading term is negative 3x cubed, in which the leading coefficient is negative 3 and the degree, it is 3. So negative 3 less than 0 and 3, it is odd, which means that the end behavior, it is up, down. To find the zeros, x0, zero, we will write negative 3x cubed plus 48x squared minus 144x equals to 0. We can simplify everything by negative 3. So it will be x cubed minus 16 x squared plus 144 divided 3 equals to 48 equals to 0. Now think about two numbers. When we multiply their product, it's 48. And when we will add their sum, it will be negative 16. So 2 times 24, 6 times 8, 3 times 16. Two times 44, 3 times 16, 4 times 12. So we can factor it into negative 4 times negative 12. When we multiply the product positive 48 and when we add it's a negative 16, then we can factor it. First of all, we take the x common factor. So it will be x squared minus 16x plus 44, 48 equals to 0. Now we factor this one. So it will be x times x minus 4 times x minus 12 equals to 0. From the first one, x is 0, x equals to 4, and x equals to 12. The y-intercept. So 0 for x. If we put x 0, all of the expression, it will be 0. And now let's sketch. So we plot on x-axis the x-intercepts. This is 0. Let's say this is 4. And here is the 12. The end behavior up, down. So up. And here, down. And now we have to connect this point. So it will be uh, uh, 
so it will be like this so on x axis we have the number of pedals pedal boards we have the pedal boards now this is a real life situation so we cannot use the second and the third quadrant in this quadrant the number of pedal boards it's negative and this is not possible. So the third, the second and the third quadrants, don't look at them. Now we'll analyze only the first and second. So if the pedal boards from zero to four, they are the profit because the Y represents the profit. The profit values, they are negative. Yes, this profit, it will be negative. So then I'm not going to look here. Then what does it have to be profit? Uh, uh, the number what does it have to be x to be a profit such that there exists a profit it has to be between 4 and 12 so we can write the number of the pedal boards from the graph it will be between 4 and 12 but this is given x Measure it into thousands. So from here it will be 4,000 less than x less than 12,000. So such that the company has a profit, the number of the pedal board sold, it should be between 4,000 and 12,000. 12, Thank you.